we actually have an internationally recognized expert um, in, in grape research and he's branching out in other things. So um, Dr. Sadanan Dekne is an assistant professor in the Department of Plant Sciences. He's located here in Sheridan and he and his team are doing a lot of neat stuff and he's just going to give you a, a brief overview on some of the grape work that they're doing today. So um, please welcome Sadana. Thank you, Brian. Uh, before I start, uh, real quick, I'd like to introduce two of our visiting scientists. So we have uh, Dr. Ashraf uh, abdul Baki from Egypt. He's from Cairo University. And uh, Ashraf has told me he lives right across the pyramids in Giza. So, so if you want to know anything about the pyramids, he's, he's the person to ask. And then uh, we also have Dr. Baktibek uh, Asanakunov. He's from uh, the Republic of Kyrgyzstan. And uh, so he'll be here if you need information from that part of the world. <laughs> okay, so uh, starting with our project, uh, the research vineyard that you see here, uh, this is two years old. So these grapes were planted in uh, June 2013. Uh, we prepared the land in uh, in 2012, uh, planted the grapes in 2013, and uh, these two years they've basically been through a roller coaster with uh, all the fluctuations in in the weather that we have uh, had over the two years. So we we planted these in 2013. It was a really good year, and uh, we got really good growth. Uh, we have uh, around 30 varieties of of grapes here. Uh, we have most of them are wine grapes. Uh, we do have some uh, juice grape varieties and some table grapes and I can give you a few hints it's real easy just by looking at a plant you can uh, tell whether a variety is uh, it's a juice grape or a, or, or a wine grape or a table grape but uh, we planted them in 2013 uh, had a really nice uh, season and uh, then we got our first freeze on October 6th if uh, any of you remember that uh, that freeze we got October 6th mm -hmm. and so that killed a lot of the top growth uh, we got a uh, around 70 percent survival in 2014 so the spring of 2014 it was was a pretty severe winter a pretty long winter and uh butt break took place around uh, around may 30th so generally i've been doing a little bit of research since uh, i've started here uh butt break in the sheridan area which is when they start start breaking bud and start growing uh, generally takes place uh, anywhere from the second to third week of may it was a little late in 2014 uh, <coughs> We had we had around 70% survival, and uh, 2014 was 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 kind of an unusual year. So these these were a really confused group of plants in 2014. They, they didn't know whether to go dormant or whether. To go. <coughs> so we had we had our first freeze on September 11th. So, so if you remember that uh, last year, September 10th it was in the 60s, and then September 11th it was 19 degrees Fahrenheit. And so these grapes didn't get any time to go dormant. We uh, basically had a lot of top growth that was killed. And uh, it stayed there for three days. Uh, and then we had summer-like weather again. And so these plants were, when I say confused, they started growing again. They, they thought it was summer. And so all the dormant buds that came out after the top got killed uh, started growing. Uh, so we had some growth uh, almost for five weeks. And then uh, we had that hard freeze again in November, which knocked them back. Uh, so they've been going through these these cycles of uh, of growth and, uh, and and freezes, but then uh, again, uh, spring of 2015, and uh, it was a really warm warm spring. Summer was uh, uh, the winter was kind of mild, and so we got bud break on April 8th, which is uh, is really early for this area. You know, typically it's almost five weeks early, and uh, we were really happy because they were they were growing well. Uh, we thought we we're going to have a really long season. And uh, then we got that freeze on May 9th. And so, <laughs> so they, that basically killed all the new growth uh, that came out. And so whatever you're seeing here is, uh, is basically growth that came out after the, the May 9th freeze. And uh, if you look at a grape plant, the way a grape plant grows or the way a grape wine grows is it's uh, two seasons of growth taking place at the same time. So what you see right now is the current season growth. But uh, if you look in the, the axle of each leaf, you can see a bud and uh, so these buds basically they're uh, they're dormant right now but uh, these buds are actually developing internally and this is what will produce the growth and uh, and the, the flowering and the fruiting for the next season so if you think about it anytime a grapevine is growing it is growing for two seasons it is growing for the current season and then it is also producing growth and uh, and and your fruit production for the next season and so any fluctuations in in, in the weather that happened in a season they just don't affect growth in that season. They are affecting growth in the next season also. And so what happened is all this growth we see is, is coming from what are known as secondary buds. So these dormant buds that you see here, 
they are actually composed of three buds. There is a, a, a primary, a secondary, and a tertiary. And so the primary grows first, it produces the flowering and fruiting for the season. If it gets killed, then you have growth from the secondary. And if the secondary gets killed, you have growth from the tertiary. So it's kind of a backup system for the plant to make sure it has some growth during that season. Now, depending on the varieties, uh, uh, most of the traditional varieties, the Merlot's Cabernet Sauvignon, if your primary bud is dead, then uh, you get no production. So basically, you will get only vegetative growth. Uh, a lot of the hybrids that we grow here, uh, you can get some fruit from the secondary buds. And so you can get, if your primaries get killed, you can get around 30% production from, from the secondary. So that is, uh, is kind of good with, the, with some of the, uh, the hybrids that we grow here. And so all this growth that you're seeing is from the secondary buds. So we had good growth in the secondaries, and then, uh, like Dan mentioned in our advisory board meeting, we had like 12 inches of rain starting May 1st, and so that caused a lot of flooding in this uh, in this vineyard. And you might think, you know, this is a nice slope. How is it going to flood here? But uh, we had flooding uh, where we had the grapes, and uh, that caused a lot of root rot. So they had the freeze, and then the secondaries had to go through the root rot. So we have around 70% uh, survival this year, which is, uh, which is pretty decent uh, despite the, the weather fluctuations. We have, uh, it's, it's early to say, but uh, based on growth patterns, we've uh, identified uh, two or three nice varieties. So there are two red wines and one white grape uh, that we think are suitable for this region. And uh, I can give you more information, but Frontenac, which is uh, a well-established uh, variety for the cold hardy regions. Uh, you know, it's doing as expected. It's doing well in Sheridan. But uh, then uh, we have uh, an Elmer Swenson selection. So if you if you look at the grape varieties that start with an ES, it basically stands for Elmer Swenson selections. Elmer Swenson was uh, he was a private grape breeder in Wisconsin, and uh, bred a lot of cold hardy grapes. But uh, this is interesting. We have one of those Elmer Swenson series grapes that uh, that seem to be doing really well. And it's a white grape, so we already have a good red grape, but if we have a good white grape, all we need is, is, is two to four good varieties for Wyoming, and uh, we can have a sustainable industry. So if you look at grape production worldwide, uh, you have more than 5,000 varieties of grapes, but uh, most of the wine production comes from uh, maybe 35 to 40 different varieties. So it's, it's a pretty narrow base of varieties that are, are used for wine production. And so if we can get you know, anywhere from four to five good varieties, if we can identify these varieties for Wyoming, then uh, I think we can, we can have a sustainable industry here. So with that, I'll, I'll take any questions. Uh, feel free to walk through the vineyard. Uh, typically, uh, you know, easy symptoms to identify this is, we have a juice grape variety right here, and uh, all you need to do is look at the back of the, of the leaf, and uh, if you see this fuzzy growth at the back, you can tell it is a, it is a hybrid, one of the parents that has been used in this hybrid is, uh, is, is a juice grape, basically. So the Concord, the Niagara, Delaware, all these varieties have a parent called Whitus Labrusca, which uh, has this fuzzy growth. And so it's really easy to identify. Just You don't need to be an expert. You can just look at the leaf and tell whether it's a juice grape or a wine grape. Yeah. I have a question on your, you're talking about primary and secondary. In primary and secondary, here's my question. Mm -hmm. I've been told that after you see the primary vine Start growing fruit, you can cut, but if you're going to cut, you cut all of the secondary, because that one for this year is not going to produce. Is that correct? Well, if, if you have primary uh, growth, uh, you're not going to have any secondary growth. So what you're probably talking about is is once your primary shoots start growing, uh, you want to remove all the suckers, the, that's, the other okay, suckers that's, that, that that's, come from that's the That's my base. question. Right. And so it depends on the region in which you're growing grapes. So right here. If, yeah, if, if you are in... Uh, a region like Wyoming, typically what we are seeing is uh, you want to let these plants sucker out and grow as a bush for the first four to five years. Yeah, ours are about 10 years old, so yes. they've told me to prune, you know, the like the, the growth that you just mentioned to prune. Right. And that's what we've been doing. Right. So in, in so this case, you would, ma you would maintain your main trunks and uh, then anything that was coming from the base, any suckers that you were getting from the base. Should, now, is there any time remove. limit as to when you should or shouldn't cut any more on them? Well, you want to remove them as soon as possible. Because uh, if you have suckers, then they are, you're investing energy in, in the suckers, okay. and that energy would otherwise be used for fruit production. So okay. you want to remove them as soon as possible. Okay, thank yeah. you. You know, we've been fortunate. We uh, haven't had any pest problems here. So we haven't had any white flies here. It's good you bring up the point. Uh, we had some anthracnose infection here, and anthracnose is uh, it's commonly known as bird's eye spot. And uh, you can take, I can show you a few samples, but 
I would never imagine we would have anthracnos in this hot, in this dry weather. Uh, this this wet season that we have got, uh, we got some anthracnose infection in here. And, and typically, I I moved here from Florida, where our wines would get chewed from anthracnose every year. Uh, I haven't seen I hadn't seen it here for for three years, but this is uh, this is the first year we saw anthracnose, and it all goes back to that uh, that wet season that we had in May. The, the the wet season with increasing temperatures. If you have hot and humid weather then that's when you see most uh, of the diseases coming on. We, we haven't uh, had any white fly problems here. Most of the grapes we have here are hybrids. And if you have a hybrid that has a parent that might be resistant to insect, then uh, it might be chewed on less by the insects. Uh, it, was, it was pretty bad uh, in the beginning, but as soon as uh, we got the heat and, uh, and dry weather, it was gone. But uh, you can still see, we, have, we still see, I have some symptoms of, of anthracnose here. Uh, the other day I was just walking uh, through one of these rows and uh, I think it was last week when we got some humid weather, hot and humid weather, and uh, we could see some black rot actually. I, I think this was, this is one of the plants you can, you can see we got some black rot here. And so if you think of, you know, f fungal problems are, are the biggest problems in, in grape production. Yeah, you can see some anthracnose right here actually. So you can take a look. This is, this is typical anthracnose infection where uh, you see those spotting those those spotting commonly known as bird eye spot but uh, if it gets really severe you can see it all over the leaves and uh, if you have production you can see it all over the fruit it wasn't that severe here so is it reduced production yes anthracnose can uh, it can completely destroy your uh, your crop for the year and and once it's there uh, there's nothing you can do to control it so fungicides that are used in grape production they are uh, mainly used as preventative so you spray before you see it. And, uh, and that's based on a lot of modeling work that's been done. So there are different models for different regions that can tell you if you're uh, ha going to have an incidence of a fungus. And so you spray before you even see the oh, fungus. If you're seeing the fungus, it's too late to spray then. Another real, real easy thing to spot is uh, you can see the, the angle of these leaves. And they're, they're kind of... Uh, uh, kind of uh, parallel to the rays of the sun and so this is this is a typical symptom of uh, you can say and this is midday even though the there is a lot of water in the soil these these plants are are, are trying to avoid the uh, the heat and so you can see the angle changes a little bit but uh, if you have drought in the soil you can see even during the daytime you can see these the the angle of these leaves it, it changes uh, real easy another easy symptom to uh, to check for drought is look at the tendrils if your tendrils are uh, they're not turgid like this if they are flaccid or if they are drying off that's a, that's a really easy symptom of drought so you can you can check for drought symptoms real easily just by uh, looking at, at some of uh, some of the structures on, on the plant we are uh, we are working on uh, a project to improve uh, weevil resistance in in alpha alpha cultivars and uh, again this is uh, using a, a biotech approach so we are we are using genetic engineering for uh, improving uh, alpha alpha resistance uh, weevils have been a big problem last year as well as this year, and uh, so we are uh, basically adopting uh, an integrated pest management strategy. So you're, we look at uh, different ways to uh, control weevils in the field, biological control, chemical control, and so our part of the study here at Sheridan is uh, looking at improving the genetics of uh, alpha alpha cultivars by introducing certain genes for insect resistance. And so uh, one of the interns, Hannah Jernigan, Hannah is right there. She's uh, working on the Alpha Alpha project. So we'll have a presentation at the poster session and uh, we can provide more information on what kind of genes are being used and uh, what techniques are being used to insert these genes in, in, in Alpha Alpha varieties. So once, once we have the plants, uh, we are currently in the process of uh, obtaining the genes. Once we have the plants, uh, we uh, have an entomologist on campus who will be evaluating these uh, varieties for resistance. And then uh, we have a, a forage agronomist who will be actually looking at forage quality any changes in forage quality that occur from uh, inserting these genes. So we can we can talk more about that at the poster session. There's, uh, there's one thing I forgot to mention uh, uh, during our uh, visit to the vineyard is, uh, we've been funded by uh, the Wyoming Department of Agriculture uh, specialty crop block grants. And so I'd like to thank Ted Craig. Uh, I actually forgot to mention that at, the, at our site at the vineyard, but uh, all this work couldn't have been possible without uh, funding from the specialty crops block grant program and uh, also the ag experiment station so i'd like to thank uh, both of them